Welcome guys to my new YouTube video. So I decided to pick up the recordings again uh, and to give you guys more YouTube videos. So um, in this video, I want to talk to you guys about Rap Notify and how that works because uh, I see a lot of people asking questions about multiplayer related stuff and especially rep notify so i just want to clear how that works and give you guys some clear examples so uh, what i got right here is the default third person project so uh, i'm going to just show you an example of how you can use a rep notify and also why a rep notify is useful compared to multicasting and stuff so to begin with we are here inside of the third person character we can simply click on play standalone one player and then hit the pie window and then we get ourselves our little window here um, so what is a rep notify and how do you get it when it comes to multiplayer well the first thing that you have to do is that you have to get yourself a variable so just hit here and get yourself a variable and call this one uh, does something <laughs> or whatever you want to call it it doesn't really matter compile and save and then if we head to the right here we will see replication options and then over here you see none replicated and rep notify so first of all let's drag this variable into the scene and get it and you can also obviously set it so this is just a variable well the first thing that you need to understand in order to make this variable replicate or rep notify in this case is if you head over to class defaults make sure that whatever actor you're using this variable in is actually actually set to replicate so by default the character class is replicated and you can see that over here if you click on class default you see replicate is set to true um, and then when we click on our variable we see two options we see replicate and rep notify so first of all when we set it to replicate we see this little icon appear here and what this means essentially is that the server each time uh, when you are within the relevancy distance so the square distance of this is 150 meters by default i believe then this variable will uh, basically communicate its value down to you as the client so if we have the server over here and the client over here which could be you or you are the server then the server will try to replicate it down so how this works is that you need to look at the variable as this and as this so basically we have um, a variable on the client here that contains a value right so in the case of a boolean it's either false or true that's the value that this variable contains and then what you what what happens is that well this exists on the server and since the server is authoritative and knows everything and is always relevant so that net kill distance doesn't even apply to the server uh, the server is always up to date because you are the one that handles this replication and then the client here has the local variable value basically so if it is set to false then that's what you locally see and when you set this to be replicated then the server will try to send the data down from the server to the client and if this one is not in sync with whatever value the server has so let's say the server is set to true but the client has the same variable still set to false then what replication does is that it will send that true value down to the client and set it here to be true as well uh, and it will do that a certain amount of times and that depends on the server's tick rate and of course that also depends on your network speed basically but over here we can see the net update frequency which is by default set to 100 uh, so it will try to do this as it says here a hundred times per second but that's a little bit a uh, cap because uh, uh, the server speed is not more than 60 so 60 fps is the max even if you have a computer with 500 fps for example 60 is the max limit so um Unreal sets it to 100, but that value will never be reached. I don't know why they do it, but uh, you could, for instance, do like 30 and set your square distance to something like 150 meters. And then uh, here you can also apply what is the minimum update frequency. And with your priority, you can basically change um, how important this uh, variable is, right? Or this actor in, in this case. We, we change the actor relevancy here and the ap actor update speed. But anyways, that's beside the point of this tutorial here. Um, this will try to update uh, 60 times per second in this case. And then what is the rep notify? Because that's what this video is all about. Well, if we then set this variable to 
wrap notify, we will get a corresponding function that will execute when the value of this variable changes. So for example, if you want to have something happen when this goes from true to false, then wrap notify becomes very useful. Because otherwise, what's going to be your uh, the other way to check this? Well, you could have an event um, uh, event timer like uh, like this basically so you could have an event timer set to one second loop and then every one second you could basically check the value right like has it changed if it has changed on my client for example then we want to execute some logic so when this goes from true to false you can check it like that or uh, there's people obviously checking stuff like this on tick so on tick you could be checking if this value has changed from true to false but that's all pretty uh, um, uh, uh, well, not so good and optimized. So the real way to do this is to have that set to wrap notify. And when you do that, you'll see that this changes to set with notify. Um, and you see that this unwrap function appears here. Now these functions, unlike any other function. So if I create my own function, my own, then you can actually put them in categories, you can have pins and outputs. These functions, you cannot put them in any categories, unfortunately, and you cannot uh, put any of those pins on it. But this is the function that occurs when the data inside this variable changes. So what does that mean? Well, let's say that we have an event, right? Custom event, and it's a server event. So let's say server uh, change value then this would be a server event run on the server reliably. Then what we can do right now is if the server sets this variable, it will automatically replicate the rep notify to the client and then both on the server and on all the connected clients, it will execute this corresponding function. And you can open this function by double clicking it here on the left or by double clicking the variable itself. And then it will show you this function here. So in this function, we are going to do a simple print string that will say hello for let's say five seconds or whatever, 10 seconds. Oh, that's not 10, here you go. So um, let's test this code. I'm gonna do keyboard um, O or P, keyboard P, and then I'm gonna call my event server change value, and I'm gonna set it to true. So when I set this to true, then in the function, it will say hello. So let's go ahead and click here two players as a listen server, hit play. Then we'll get one on the red left and one on the right. On the left is our client here. So if I now go ahead and click on P, then you see that the client says hello and the server says hello. And same here on the server, if we press P, we'll see the client say hello and the server say hello, which basically indicates that this uh, rep notify is now executed and then it executed this function here. So why is this more useful than, for example, uh, having a multicast? So let's make a multicast. If we do custom event, multicast um, change a value, then we could check it like this. So let's make this a multicast event reliable. Let's set this variable back to just be replicated. And then in, uh, when we press P on the server, we're gonna call our multicast event here. And then the multicast event will set this replicated variable for us. So if we connect all the wires, then we can follow the logic. Here we press P, the value comes true. Then we go to multicast and then we get the replicated variable, which we can then print. So let's click on play. And then here on the left, we're gonna press P and we'll see client one says true, server says true. And then on the right, Client one says true, service says true. But what is the big difference here? Well, if a player is uh, not connected during this event to your session, so let's say you're hosting a multiplayer session and um, somebody connects five minutes after, right? And within those five minutes that that player was not in this session, then this variable would have been set to, well, or let's say that an event would have fired here, right? So the print hello then that connecting player would miss this event. It would miss the print hello event. But in the case that uh, you would execute, you would put that logic back inside of this uh, wrap notify variable here, 
So if we would set this back to wrap notify again, then as soon as the client would connect, even five minutes after, they would get the variable updated to their local computer uh, because the value would be different than their offline value. Uh, and that would mean that they would still execute this event. So this is useful for doors, for example. So if we would take a look at something like a door that is open and closed, then this wrap notify would be very useful to use there because even players that would not be connected in your session at that time would still get this update and execute this function uh, and they would not miss an event so they would not see a door out of sync in that case well guys i hope that makes sense that's it for this video uh, i'll be making more of these random videos just explaining multiplayer topics so if you like and enjoyed this video then please uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel all right bye guys